Hey everyone, it's time for another 3 at 3 on Solar PV. I'm Jen Runyon, Chief Editor of Renewable Energy World. I'm Paula Mintz, Chief Market Research Analyst, SPV Market Research. Hey, so we've been having a little bit of technical difficulties, everyone, so we're going to power through and if the hopefully the video won't get too flickery, but um, please stick around because we have three really cool topics to top, talk about today. The first one is Sungevity. Big news, big announcement today. The second one is going to be the residential solar business model and, you know, how that really is working. And then our last one is um, Southeast Asia manufacturing. There's been some movement in the manufacturing space that Paula's been watching and is going to give us our, our, her take on that. So let's start with Sungevity. Big announcement. They're bankrupt. They filed for Chapter 11. I think they owe $100 million to their creditors. Um, what happened? They used to be a giant solar company. Well, what can I say? When you live on debt, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and constant borrowing, that should be a, a real big clue. And uh, another huge company that has done this for quite a while is Tesla and then Solar City. But if you live on debt and you are, you know, it's like your household, right? You have $100 a week, and that's it to pay for groceries. And you consistently spend $150 on groceries. You pay $100 in cash to charge the 50 Eventually, that's going to catch up with you, and you're going to have to pay the piper. Um, the problem with solar is we are, you know, we're sexy, right? <laughs> solar, yeah, wow. Yeah, so cool. It's a cool industry. Exactly. Yeah. So it takes a really long time for uh, investors and others to start saying, maybe maybe the business metrics actually matter here. Mm. Um, and there's so much all the way up and down the value chain, low margin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, operations, that it can be really difficult to, you know, let's look back at um, Sun Edison, you know, the year before they collapsed in a heap, right? It was so obvious if you're following mm. their business activities that this was going to happen. But, you know, like at the SPI right before they, you know, died, they were talking, they were going into everything. They were right. into off-grid utilities, residential, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Wind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, 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 it's, it was a stunningly um, diffused business model. You look way back in the past at Q-cells and the same thing. They just invested in every single solar technology in the world. It's you know, like, come but on, that, guys. Right, but what, but Sungevity wasn't making announcements like that. I mean, and so I, I felt like they kind of just quietly. It had a high debt structure. So it was in that business model that's, you know, partly leases and other things that that, you know, it just, it's very, it, when you focus, <laughs> it, it was, it's a bad business model we're going to talk about in a second, and it yeah. requires you to be a lot of equipment, and the residential business model also is shifting under our, uh, market is shifting under our feet in the U.S., which is globally the, one of the, if not the biggest residential markets is the U.S. Right. Okay. So, so let's move it, on to that. So let's I mean, move on. So are you talking about the shift from um, owning versus leasing? Because that's the shift that I, I read about this week. A lot of people to dive in, right? So that right. caused the solar uh, residential market, which is chugging along and growing, you know, for quite a few years to go like that, right? And everybody said solar leases. Yes, that, that did it. Solar for free. Meanwhile, the utilities really don't like that. Because it affects their business model. This is a whole other solar, you know, three on three for us to talk about. We have talked about it. Go, all right, you know, no. And so what are we going to do here? We're going to not compensate at market rates. We're going, we want to go back to avoided costs, which is a whole other discussion. Right. We, you know, metering, nope, we're going to have to cap that sucker. And the, even the markets like, uh, like, uh, Hawaii, where there's uh, self consumption supposedly are just going like that, right? So, the stuff that incur the economic model for end users has just been upended, and that trickles back through and affects all solar, um, it, all the companies that are involved in the residential mm -hmm. sectors. The mm -hmm. problem with the residential market right now is that we our our lobbying is not very good right. because Calcia has really is really working on uh, solar citizens, which mm -hmm. I think they 
need a catchier name, please. But they're really working on linking the end users and even people who are just very interested in community solar to the solar community because there's the lobbying that we yeah. need. We by and large ignored them. Right, and Those you're talking are, about you're talking about lobbying to utilities, right? So we keep all of our state PUCs, utilities, PUC, yeah. to your congressperson, yeah. who, who right now in our political climate in the U.S. may or may not have a lot of clout. Nonetheless, the bigger we are as a group, the more we can get done in our favor, and that means you go to the PUC with a whole, you know, like hundreds of thousands of people saying, no, don't touch our net metering. No, this is what it means to us. Mm -hmm, no, mm -hmm. don't touch the compensation. You know, I mean, but otherwise, they're set, they're left on the sidelines having things change retroactively or being <sighs> having considered okay. legislation. And then, no, but, the economic model no longer works out. All right, but here's my question, though, because we've also talked about how people that go, you know, get free solar don't really know what they're getting and, and aren't really given the full story. And ha, I mean, so how are the, so if they're not informed, how is that, how are those changes affecting the market? I mean, those well, they're not, the, informed, they're not informed until they get their true up, which is the bill you get at the end of the year. You, you, yeah. Oh my God. So, you know, we've talked about this last year when PG&E went with time of use and now it's got the so most electricity bill. It's actually, now it now makes economic sense for me to have a solar installation mm -hmm. and it's really... People... Done. Utilities in the PUC can switch the billing, the rate you pay and the t they can go to time of use which suddenly and they can shift the time of use so it doesn't really favor solar and that you can't be grandfathered into right so what has happened it and then that and since the primary way people still you know installers small to medium installers and even the solar lease guys get business is word of mouth traveling around and around and around seeing solar on someone's roof so the more you you start to lose the word of mouth the economic okay. model Shifts. People look into it and go, wait a minute, I'm not saving anything. I mean, when I was uh, recently at a small conference, and there's, I won't say what state it is, because right off the top of my head, I don't remember. <laughs> but <laughs> you uh, travel a lot. See, I had a win, um, and it is a win. Any battle that we win anything is a win, candidly. Mm -hmm. But uh, utilities wanted to really, uh, really, really changed the way that net right. metering was compensated and what they did was said okay it's going to be here now and then it goes down a little bit well why should it go down that's not the way markets typically work why should it go down that favors the utility not the person with the solar system on the roof now the problem with the solar lease model which actually also really makes the solar lease model bad because the solar lease model has an escalation charge that goes up based on the fact that your utility bill, your electricity bill will go up. Yeah. So essentially, we don't really have a business model now that perfectly works. Even ownership, mm. sadly, needs, I mean, what we need to do again is circling back for all, develop a solar lease model that's actually fair, at which point you have more companies like Sangevity failing, candidly, because mm. then they're carrying this equipment and they just, they, it just is a, it's overburdened. Um, sort of the Amway philosophy is how I used to like to think of the right. solar lease. But, but so we need, we need the political clout. All the solar business models, owning, leasing, whatever. We need the political clout. Yeah. Because we need low interest loans. Yep. We need a leasing model that's actually fair to both parties. Yeah. We need, we need, like, So, uh, that, that's the problem with residential right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm worried that our technical difficulties are going to make this too difficult to watch, but we'll go on to our very last topic of the day, which is okay. Southeast Asia and manufacturing. And so you're noticing that manufacturing is moving rather quickly to different parts of the world. So tell me what you were seeing, because I don't... 
I don't follow that part of the market. Well, um, and this is, you know, this will be in the upcoming manufacturer shipment report, which you guys, is available through you guys and oh my god just a few weeks so wow. scary um, but but basically the Chinese manufacturers finally feel feeling the margin pinch are moving feeling the margin pinch to the degree that suddenly the tariffs matter to them mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're moving into markets where they're you know where eventually there will also be tariffs like, you, sorry guys it's not gonna go away um, but it's like Vietnam Malaysia Thailand and in some of these markets, and I've noticed that some uh, suppliers, sell suppliers in Vietnam, suddenly capacity goes from almost nothing or nothing to hundreds of megawatts almost wow. over. Wow. That means, that means essentially the equipment is installed and they're suddenly producing commercial product. That's not the way it works. You have to go through a time frame, a year, two, a year's too short, I'll be honest with you, but let's just say a year where it's repeatability you need to have sufficient volume at an average efficiency and quality etc in order to you know send it off to have some lab look at it and say yep you're right it's okay <laughs> you know wow. you need sufficient testing and it needs to hit an average consistently over time so you don't install the equipment and puke out commercial pardon my professional word there <laughs> you do not install the equipment and then Im immediately produce commercial product and that's what's happening and that and really is that, happening yikes that's really happening and, and what happens down the line is there will be quality issues i promise you can but, can people who are purchasing those models tell that, that that's where they've been manufactured um, sometimes no. I mean, you could get a cell from Vietnam installed in a module in Malaysia. You get right. a cell from right. Vietnam installed in a module in Europe. You get a cell from you know Malaysia installed in a module module blah, 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 <laughs> from China. You can get a cell from the U.S. installed in a module from China. So no, you yeah. cannot tell, and you sometimes cannot tell just by looking at the module visually. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's keep our eye on that and see what happens. And we are gonna wrap up here because we've gone 12 minutes, so we've gone more than we're supposed to. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, and we will check in with you next time on 3 at 3, 3 at 3 on Solar PV. <laughs> Bye. Bye.